no clue what that was. I was playing, <laughs> that got stuck in my head while we were getting the camera set up. I was like, what is this riff? <laughs> Anyways, that is totally not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about when should a beginner start getting pedals. Now, I did a video called uh, Pedals a Beginner Should Avoid. You can check that out if you want to. And I thought, you know, it'd be great to kind of accompany that with, you know, obviously do what you want. But um, I do think there are some, you know, kind of the key points to kind of hone in on whenever you're getting pedals, especially if you're a beginner, because, oh my God, there's so many pedals. There were a lot of pedals when I started playing guitar, but there's like 10 million more pedals now. So we're going to do all that kind of stuff. But this is not so much a lesson, but you can check out my free guitar course if you're feeling like it. That is linked down below. And uh, yo, let's just go ahead and jump into this one. So the first thing that you need to be aware of, if you are a beginner, that pedals can get expensive quick. And even just buying one pedal can be expensive, if, especially if you uh, don't have a 9-volt adapter, or some pedals require uh, you know, a 12-volt adapter, and usually those pedals will come with the adapter, but sometimes they don't. You know, I've, I've seen situations where maybe if you buy one used, you don't have one. But you have to be aware that pedals on the surface seem affordable, and they are but it's kind of like going down a rabbit hole. You get one, like, uh, you know, it's, it's 100 bucks, and you're like, okay, that's, that's not the worst thing in the world. Well, before you know it, you've bought five $100 pedals, and you're like, did I just spend $500 on pedals? Yes, you did, and you're actually gonna do that a lot. And um, especially if you run off of batteries, that can get really expensive. I definitely recommend some kind of power supply, but that's the other thing. Either you're gonna have, like, you know, a million nine volt adapters laying around, or you're gonna buy a power supply. It's all very expensive. So just make sure that you can, uh, you know, afford it and really understand what's gonna happen. Obviously, if you have the willpower to just get one pedal, then you're, you're better off than most of us. <laughs> now, the next phase that I wanna talk about is the intro phase. And I'm, I'm saying get past the intro phase of guitar. Now. Uh, I'm not saying you're that if you're the person who can only play intros to songs because, well, gosh darn it, that's the the phase that I survive in. <laughs> I just know the intros to songs. No, I'm talking about the actual beginning stages of getting comfortable doing some basic chord changes and stuff like that. Um, I don't recommend necessarily getting pedals for that. There's one rare situation where I would recommend it. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later on, but um, overall, Make sure that you at least, you know, you know the names of the strings, you can tune your guitar, you can play some basic chords, because otherwise, you don't want to just be doing that and having pedals and stuff like that. Um, in the, you know, in the beginning, it should be all about learning how to play, not so much about how much gear you can get and stuff like that. I know it's easy to see all these pedals that look cool, all these amps, all these guitars, all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, I, I would just hold off. Get past that intro phase and where you can like, maybe once you can play one song or something like that, then think about getting your pedal. Now, like I said in the last one, there is a rare situation, in my opinion, where it can, you know, you can justify a pedal pretty early on. And that is, you need a pedal that fits your style of playing. Now, if you are a person who is inspired by Metallica, you want distortion. Uh, I have like the least Metallica-like distortion ever happening right now. But, um, but, but distortion nonetheless. And if you are given just a clean practice amp, it's gonna be tough. You know, I, I can't tell you as a person who taught in stores for years and years and years, I taught in a store for five years, so many kids came in there and wanted to be able to play, you know, Metallica, Pantera, Van Halen, ACDC, all that kind of stuff, but their parents had them playing either acoustic or on, like, they would have, like, a Strat or something like that, but just a clean amp. They didn't have any distortion, and they would always come into the lesson 
and that were always hyped up about the lesson because I would have amps with distortion or you know a couple pedals in there or something and they're like man my amp just doesn't do that and they would bring their amp into me and it would just be like literally a straight like fender clean amp and I would talk to the parents and they were just like yeah we just want to wait and see if he's gonna stick with it I'm like ah that makes it hard that makes it tough so if you're a person who is inspired by rock or just heavy distorted music Honestly, if you have a clean amp versus getting a whole new amp, try a distortion pedal. You know, I will throw that out there. Some people might disagree. You're more than welcome to, you know, post your comments and disagree with me. But I tell you what, man, it's hard to be inspired by something that doesn't sound like what you want to sound like. You know, regardless of the fact if you know what, I mean, sounds good or bad, good tone, bad tone, any of that kind of stuff, that's subjective. But it's hard to want to play Metallica riffs on a clean amp, you know, whenever you want to hear uh, that and you have it just like clean and you're like, it doesn't do the same thing for you. So that's kind of one of the situations where if you are kind of a beginner, I would still maybe get past that intro phase a little bit, but if you need to get a distortion pedal, if you have an amp that's only clean and you're trying to play rock and roll. This one could be is again I'm saying past that intro phase you've gotten some stuff on your fingers maybe you're even starting to learn a little bit of scales and that kind of thing and maybe you're just bored just clean and distorted really isn't enough for you now this is where I recommend uh, once you've got your feet you know your toes in the sand a little bit uh, you can maybe venture into a multi effects unit you don't have to have the best of the best at this point or anything like that you can just have something that has lots of different sounds because you might if, if you're like me I always say I'm not a person I think more of tones in terms of guitars so if I'm like oh I need this kind of tone I switch guitars but like when it comes to like thinking of like oh I need a tremolo sound and stuff like that I really I'm not educated enough in that you know style of effects to truly know what I want this is where a multi effects unit really comes into play because I type in what I want, I'm like, I don't know, some kind of tremolo, and it gives me a list of different effects. So like, I'm using an Axe effects, but you could get like an H9, I, these are kind of expensive, but there's lots of other units out there nowadays that you can do, and you can have it list in front of you, like the, what's HX Stomp, Is that, I think that's the Line 6 one, and it tells you the name, and you can see the effect that you're using. So like, if I'm like, I don't really know what I want. Uh, I just need some kind of tremolo. I mean, I could turn on a tremolo now and just kind of like figure it out. But again, I don't necessarily know like tremolo settings or different sounds. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I want that like black hole sun vibe. And I, you know, I look, I'm like, oh, it's a, you know, a rotary sounds like that to me. I don't actually know what they were using. But it sounds very much like a rotary, in, in my opinion, but... So like I said, my ears were always kind of tweaked more towards different guitars being different tones. So when it came to this kind of stuff, um, I was just not educated enough in it. So that's where multi-effects units came in, because they could kind of like direct that ship for me. And I would be like, oh, I want this kind of sound. or. Um, you know, like I said, you, you get, you have a lot of fun doing it because all of a sudden you're like, oh, if I do this and this, like this is like a multi-delay. Um, you can hear how it's hit. You know, whatever, you just kind of start messing around with it and the effects can really inspire you to practice and play and um, most importantly, create music. So. If you are kind of just bored with your sound and you know wanting to try some different stuff but don't really know what to try, I mean, I started out on an RP50 was my second pedal, um, which by all means doesn't sound the best, but it was really inspiring and had a drum machine and all kinds of stuff in it. So, you know, maybe go that route. And the final one I will leave you off with is actually something that I still do to this day when getting new gear is 
I feel like you should have to earn it. And I don't mean just saving up the money and stuff like that. I always try to set goals for myself. So if I like really want, like I wanted this guitar, you know, um, uh, very much so. I've wanted it for a long time. And when I finally decided to get it, I was like, okay, I need to like earn this guitar. What am I going to do to earn the guitar? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make these many videos, I'm gonna do like a video a day for a month and stuff like that. Like it, it's just setting different goals for yourself. Like there's another guitar that I want. And for me, I'm like, you know what? I want that guitar a lot. I'm not getting it till I finish my beginner guitar course. Like until that's done, that's my goal. That would be my reward for finishing that course. So you, I, I set these goals for myself and it motivates me to work harder for one because it, so much of guitar is self-discipline. You know, you have to have a lot of self-discipline to make yourself practice, to do all this kind of stuff. So I recommend maintaining that throughout your entire lifetime of playing guitar. Keep that self-discipline. Like you want a new pedal, you want this. Like this is a great one. Like if you're a beginner and you want a pedal, set a goal. How many songs do you need to learn before you can justify that pedal? Don't just go out and buy a bunch of stuff because you can. Make those goals, force yourself to work really hard and then whenever you get it, it's such a reward. It's it's crazy. You know, like I said, like you get the guitar that you've wanted, you get the pedal you've wanted, you get whatever it is, and you're like, inside, you really feel like you earned it. You know, outside of obviously, you had to save up. Like I saved up and it, for a while and got this guitar, but then, you know, I made goals for myself. I was like, okay, the money's part of it. What am I gonna do work-wise or practice-wise or what song am I gonna learn? What do I need to be able to play? To where I feel like I've earned this guitar. So I literally approach every piece of gear that I get that way. Um, I just turned down getting a guitar. I was like, you know what? I have the money to buy it, but um, like I said, until I get that beginner guitar course done, I'm not getting it. Like, that's just the bottom line. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> Going stone cold on you. But but yeah, so I'm gonna wrap up the video there. Uh, hopefully some of this stuff was helpful if you are a beginner. Like I said, I can't recommend setting goals, having these parameters for yourself uh, with a lot of this stuff is really helpful. You can get, you know, gear overdose real bad, option, par um, bleh, option paralysis can hit you. Uh, so I don't recommend that, but if you are gonna get stuff, like I said, make it, make it count, you know? Feel very grateful for every piece of gear that you, you know, are lucky enough to get. So, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, turn on the notifications. I didn't realize that uh, only about 10, uh, I think it was like 9.8% of the people have notifications turned on. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. So I will see you guys later. Whoop!